Welcome to Unreal Gems. This video will kick off the Citrine shading series. First, we are going to take a look at the stylized hair shading. We are going to use techniques like anisotropy that we have learned in my PBR shading series. We are going to apply them to a stylized character. Okay, so we are back in Unreal Engine and this time we are taking a look at the hair shading in Citrine. So let's go ahead and take a look first at the material. So first things first, let's take a look at the base color, which is the easiest part of the material. As you can see, we are sampling a texture. It is quite a simple texture. It is a color texture with the hair color and some volume because stylized characters can look pretty flat. So it's a good idea to give them some texture in the base color, unlike in uh, photorealistic characters, which have no shading in the base color, but this is a special case. So we are breaking the rules. You can see that we have sRGB activated because this is a color map and we have the normal compression settings. So DXT15, PC13. Okay, so once we configure properly the texture, it's time to take a look at the next things in the shader graph. You can forget for now about the multiply because we will take a look at that later. And you can see here another node, another new node, which is hue shift. I like this node a lot because it makes it real easy to shift colors. We are going to see it uh, right now in action. We just input the texture to the node, a parameter to the hue shift percentage, and then the result we plug in the base color pin in the material. Once we have this, we can take a look at the material in action. It is quite simple. You can see that the only parameter that we can adjust is the base color texture, which I'm not going to switch because this is the one that I need, and the hue parameter. That you can see as it goes to one is going to start changing the color of the hair of the character. So you can see that I can switch colors easily without having to change textures or anything. And you can see that the character now has uh, pink hair instead of blonde. You can also use this to fine tune the shade of yellow, the shade of uh, blonde, instead of doing those big color changes. As you can see, you can shift a little bit and you get different shades of blonde, which may be what you are looking for. I'm going to leave it as is default, which is zero, so don't touch the color. And now let's take a look at another part of the material. Okay, so let's now take a look at the ambient occlusion in the material. So here we have it. Remember that I told you before that the multiplies we were going to explain later. So now it's the time. As you can see, we are sampling a ambient occlusion map here. It's pretty straightforward. You can go ahead and take a look at the image. You already know that the black parts are going to be in the shadow and the white parts are going to be exposed to the light. If you have more doubts, please take a look at my other tutorial in my PBR series in Unreal. But uh, just as a quick reminder, we need to sample this map without sRGB activated because it is not a color, it's a physical property. So we need to deactivate sRGB and we are going to maintain the compression settings as default. Once you have properly sampled the ambient occlusion map, we are going to take a look at what the power node does. This just um, gives a little boost to the ambient occlusion uh, map or the other way. So we can use it to intensify the effect or make it less apparent. The output of this power node that we have parameterized with this parameter is going to feed the multiplies that we saw before. And what they do is actually, this is going to be black when it is in shadow. So the multiply is going to get rid of the color and it's going to converge to black. We feed that to the base color. And then 
if it is on the light it is going to be one and the color is going to be maintained so that's how the ambient occlusion map works if we fit the specular with the multiply what is going to do is kill the specular highlights where the map is black and let them be when the map is white i should mention that if you are only using dynamic lights and you are not uh, combining uh, baked maps with dynamic uh, things like for example a character you don't need to perform these two multiplies you can just plug the ambient occlusion map in the ambient occlusion pin and that's pretty much it i do it this way because it's going to work everywhere no matter if you are using baked lighting or not and it gives us a lot of control okay so let's now see it in action because we are done with this part of the material and let's take a look at our hair with the ambient occlusion map so i have this ao intensity parameter and the AO map I'm not going to change the AO texture because this is the one that we need and let's now activate the AO intensity parameter and let's see what turning up the number does so it's intensifying the ambient occlusion effect but only on the crevices of the character of the hair in this case so as you can see it's not uh, making the rest of the hair black only the parts of the ambient occlusion map that are already black or gray. So if we go the other way, it's going to make the ambient occlusion map less intense. As you can see, you can almost get rid of it, but this is not what we want. We will usually keep it uh, as one or higher because you may want more volume and that's why you turn it up. So that's pretty much it for the ambient occlusion map as you can see everything is quite simple so that's that and now let's go and take a look at the rest of the more common material parameters so on one hand we have the specular value that controls the intensity of the specular reflections then we have the metallic parameter which controls if the surface is metallic or not and also the roughness, which tells us if the surface has imperfections or not. We are going to see them in action. And if you want more info, again, I refer you to my PBR series in Unreal, in which you can see all of these parameters in action and everything explained in detail. Okay, so another common map that we are going to use is the normal map in order for the low poly mesh to have a little more detail so it will bring detail from a high poly mesh to a low poly one without the extra performance cost so it's a nice way to add extra detail to sample the normal map is quite simple you just uh, usually import it and it will say that it is a normal map and it will configure it automatically but you can check that the compression settings are normal map the sRGB parameter is deactivated and depending on if you have a OpenGL map or a DirectX 1 you may need to use the flip green channel in my case I don't need to because this is a DirectX map so you only need to flip the green channel uh, with the OpenGL ones again if you are in doubt go ahead and check out my PBR series and everything will be pretty clear to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and test the material out now that we know what everything is. Okay, so remember we have the normal map. We have it right here. I'm not going to change it. There is no point on it. It's just to add detail to the hair without the extra geometry. And then we have the metallic parameter, the roughness parameter, and the specular parameter. Here I'm going to not be physically correct because I'm just trying to go for a certain look with the character. This is a stylized character. It is not photorealistic, so I'm not going to base my decisions on physical properties of the materials or hair or whatever. I'm just going to eyeball what looks good. So as you can see, I can turn the hair more metallic, which looks like gold, or I can go down 
and make it look more like a uh, plastic. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is because that was the point that I liked. And then we can fiddle with the roughness. As you can see, as I go higher, makes the surface more imperfect and the specular reflections disappear. If I go down, it makes it look like a reflective plastic or a mirror. If I would go to one in the metallic parameter, which looks horrible, by the way. So I'm just testing it out and I'm going to go to back to the roughness parameter. So it is in a nice middle ground, which I like because I have the more matte look in the hair, but with a specular highlights still. And with the specular parameter, as you can see, we can also fine tune the look, but I like it all the way up to one. This is only an artistic decision. It's not based on, on physics. I would have to use the IOR of the hair to properly configure the specular, but here I am looking for a stylized look, which is not based on, on reality. So I'm going to break the rules on purpose. So let's now take a look at the rest of the material, which we are almost done with it. The only thing left is the anisotropy parameters, which we are going to explain real quick right now. Okay, so for anisotropy, again, if you are in doubt, go ahead and check out my other series in PBR, but it is a quite a nice effect for hair, which makes the hair have a certain a specular reflection that we are going to explain later when we can fiddle with the parameter. But uh, in order for this to work, we need to plug the anisotropy parameter to the anisotropy pin and the flow map that we have uh, calculated in Substance. If you want to know how to do it, please let me know in the comments and I will make a small tutorial on how we can create flow maps in Substance. And then we have this small uh, function, which is quite simple, that its output is going to be connected to the tangent pin. So the anisotropy and tangent pin are what is going to give us the anisotropy look. And now let's take a look at the compute tangent, which is going to sample our flow map, which is what we see here. It's quite simple. You, you have a texture object. You only need this if you are making a function like me. Then we have the texture sample, which will just sample a, a flow map texture. We need to normalize it from 0, 1 to minus 1, 1. If you want to know the details, again, I refer you to the PBR series. Everything is explained there. And then we remove the blue channel because only the red and green channels are uh, pertinent for this type of map and then we plug the output to the tangent. So with that we are more or less done and I just want you to know how to properly sample the flow map which is quite simple. You need to choose the compression settings vector displacement and deactivate sRGB in order for the flow map to be properly sampled. And with that you are going to see right now what the anisotropy does. I'm going to right now have it in negative numbers, but let's go ahead and leave it as default. In order for it to be deactivated, it, we need to have zero. And we can turn the anisotropy up. Well, let's not take it that far. This is going to run along the strands of hair, but this is not what we want. Proper hair anisotropy goes the other way. So we need to use a negative number as we had before. And as you can see, the, uh, the specular reflection travels perpendicular to the hair strands, which is what we want. Again, if you do like the other way, the anisotropy, you can go ahead and use whatever you want. Again, we have the flow map here, but I'm not going to change it because this is the flow map that I have prepared for this character. And with that, you can see that we are done with the material and it is quite simple, but it is quite effective because as you can see with a couple of notes, we are getting some nice stylized hair, uh, which took us really little time. Well, so that's it for this video. As you can see, the material is quite simple, but effective. 
we even used advanced techniques like anisotropy and others. We took some artistic licenses because this is a stylized character and we can do so because it is not photorealistic. If you have liked the video, go ahead, like and subscribe and we'll see each other in the next videos of the series. Thank you.